Hello, in this video is part two of the cable tool with Python states. So in previous video, I made a tool where we can simply click and we can add cables on certain geometry. As you can see here, it's just a simple cable tool where we click, we have a connection to the cable. So in this video, I want to take it a step further and add some more interaction with the mouse. So here is an example of a few features I want to add. So now I click my mouse where I want to cable. I also place the guide where I actually click. And now I create the cable. And when I drag my mouse down, you can see that we can add a gravity value. So we can control with the mouse how much the cable should hang. So we can do this by each click, of course. So each time I click, I can decide how much the cable should be influenced by gravity. And you can have something like this, for example. So here, here we are back at our Python code, like we did before. So we mainly here added some options for the intersection and then we placed the point. Now there are a few things I want to change, of course. And what is going to be very important for this video is how actually our mouse behaves. So I want to know the difference between when I'm holding my mouse, when I start clicking my mouse, and when I release my mouse. So these are very simple actions, but I would like to know when this is happening. So at the moment we are using device is left button, which doesn't give us all the results, for example, when I hold my mouse or when I start clicking my mouse. So coming here back to our documentation, we have here actually left mouse button options. So at the moment we use the uh, is left button, but there are also other features we can do, and here they are a bit more specific. So for example, we have picked, start, active, and changed. So each of them is clicked, when it's pressing down, when it's holding down, and when it's released. So these are very useful to know, because when I actually click my mouse, when I start clicking my mouse, that is where I want my cable, and when I hold and drag my mouse, when it's sort of like active, I want to add the gravity. So I'm going to use the start and the active. So start, click, add cable, and active is basically how far my cable should go down based on how much I'm dragging my mouse. So we need the reason.ui event, and we also need the if statement. So I'm just going to copy this first one here, and let's place it here for the moment. So this reason part, I'm going to place it over here where I create my other values. So it's nicely cleaned there. So now when I basically click my mouse, we will have now a print of the of the string left mouse button. So you can already test this if you want to. So every time I click my mouse, we will have now the Houdini console here saying left mouse is clicked, left mouse is clicked. So it's very useful to often like print certain values so you can double check them. But I want to actually use is the start one. Then instead of this printing, I'm actually going to copy paste this code here and paste it over here and actually don't want to use this anymore. I want to focus on these mouse events instead of the, the default one. So now this code will be activated. So this is basically handling the multi-parameter values. So we're going to go trigger the self start, which you can look up here. So start self, and then it will handle some of the multi-parameter instances and add a multi-parameter instance every time we click. Then further here, we set our default values and set our positions. So that should normally work. So when we press apply, we should still have a working. So when I click my mouse, we still have this cable. Notice when you're using the start event, you will need to move your mouse a little bit. So when I click, nothing happens, but when I click and move the mouse a bit, you see that, will, that there will be a point placed. So, but I, I want to further then use the click drag for the gravity. So I'm going to create another mouse function and we're going to copy paste this if statement here. And instead of the start, as long as the mouse is active, I want to then add the gravity. So for the moment, I'm going to use a print saying, okay. So now I need to calculate the difference between my mouse when I start and when I'm holding my mouse. So I need to save the position 
when I first click my mouse, and then I need to ask the position where my current mouse is. So here, going quickly to the documentation, if I scroll up here, we can actually already have here reading the UI input devices. We can simply print here our uh, mouse here, so the X position, the Y position. We can also do other things like when we press Shift, Control or Alt. This can also be very interesting if you want to add more functionality. You can also include the Shift key or the Control key to add multiple choices when you click with your mouse, for example. So in this case, I want to use the screen position. And based on the screen position, I want to calculate the gravity scale. It's also possible to calculate the gravity scale based on the intersection position. But since we are switching from sometimes a, a geometry to our construction plane, we can have different big differences. So when I would click my mouse on my geometry and switch to not my geometry, there will be a huge difference in value. So that's why I'm going to use my mouse screen position. So first of all, I need a global value where I can actually store my first click. So I'm going to go back to the init at the top. And in here, I've already created my geometry from before. And I want to create a new one called self dot first click or first hit something you can easily remember. And I'm going to store this at zero zero. So this will store the X and the Y position. So I'm going to use this later. So here in this code, I'm going to bring down a new line. I'm going to use my first click and I want to store the device mouse X and Y position. So now we have this location where I first clicked. I know my X and my Y position. And if you want, we can actually test this out if this is a stable value. So we can basically print this over here. And normally we should have a stable value. So when I click my mouse, you can see that it is a constant value of the first time that I clicked somewhere. And I will click here and I have a different value. So you can see that we have a consistent value that this is the position where I first clicked my mouse on the screen. This is the exact position. And what I thought was interesting to do here is to actually focus on the Y axis. So basically when my mouse moves up or down, I will increase the gravity. So I will be not looking at the X. You can actually use the X for something else if you want to. So, but if you look at the Y, so you can simply do this over here. So I'm going to create a new line over here and let's just call this gravity is equal to is equal to my current mouse position. So here I'm asking the mouse position again while I'm activating my mouse. I want to minus this my first click event. So here and and this is containing the X and the Y value. So I'm going to have to ask the Y value. We can basically print this here as well. And check that out. And we can see we have a value. So if I go up at my mouse, we can see it's going to very positive values. If I go down, it's negative. But you can see as closer as I get to my original hit, it's going to have a low value. And when I go up, it's going to have a high value. So now I can basically control how much my mouse will drag. So that is working. And I'm gonna this I'm gonna remove the print and I'm gonna save my value. So before I can save it, I actually need to make a parameter to save this in. So currently we have here a few parameters and we have the weight. We're not really using the weight, so I'm going to delete this or you can reuse the weight. And I'm going to create a new parameter here that is called my gravity. And also give this a proper name. Then going back to our Python state, what I'm going to do here is then copy paste here this value because I want to set a float. So I want to copy paste this over here. And of course, we are going to set, a, we are going to look at our parameters. And right now it's looking at the use points, which is this one, use points. And I want to change this to my gravity. So I'm in here, 
I'm going to change this to the graph. And then this code is basically getting the current number of our multi-parameter. So right now here, it's actually a hashtag, but in here we need to get our current number. And since we are using a template, this is already done for us, so we don't have to worry about that. Then here in the set, so you want to set the gravity scale and I'm going to here copy paste this gravity. And now we have the gravity stored in this parameter. Now there are a few things here we can adjust to it. We can, for example, ask the absolute value. So it always goes positive. And if you want to, we can, for example, divide this by 10. So we can, so we get much smaller values. So, and as you can see here, over here, my parameters, you will see that we have now a change in this parameter. So this parameter is now controlled by my mouse as well. And now I want to store this parameter in an attribute and actually use this then as my gravity. So here was our basic network. And what I want to do here after this add node, I want to loop over our multi-parameter and store the values from the multi-parameter. So I'm going to create a loop here and I'm going to use the for each with feedback. And I'm also need to create this uh, import node. And here our iteration count will be the number of how many clicks I have. So I'm going to ask the multi-parameter on how many clicks we are currently having. So in here it's called points and this will be four. So this is this number. So we have this four times. Then I'm going to use a create attribute node over here. And in this attribute node, I want to create an attribute called gravity. So in here, asking the current point number. So I'm going to ask detail. So repeat. Iteration. So now in here, I want to store the current gravity value. So to get the current gravity value, we cannot simply type this, for example. So you know, I cannot just simply get gravity because I have four values of them. So I have to add the number. So then I'm going to use this code. I would often copy paste this code on a notepad so I can always have this code laying around because it's pretty useful to have. So this is basically a function expression that can combine two different strings together. So in here we have our basic gravity value that I want to access. And here I want to get the loop number. So the iteration number. So I'm going to ask the detail of the repeat metadata node. And I want to guess the iteration number, which is basically copy pasted from here. So I want to combine these together. So it will be graph in the first loop, it will be zero. And then it will just store this and use this in the channel reference for the parameter. Also very important here, we need to actually set this to points because we want to make sure we are looping over the points and not over primitives or something else. So when I now have my loop and now here we have our gravity value. So point zero will be dot two, 11, seven, five. So let's check this here, zero, 11, seven, five. So that seems pretty accurate to me. And let's plug this in over here in the network. This is now part of it. And now I want to access the values here in my transform. So now you can see here in my transform, I'm actually having this gravity value attribute here. So I have the seven, the six and the five. So the six over here is actually because of the resample. So it's going to automatically calculate the value in between that could fit. But right now I actually want to get the value of number two. So what I'm going to do here, instead of this code, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to just simply ask the point if I can get the attribute. So point zero, so look at itself. Then I want to look at point number two. 
and I want to look at the attribute that is called gravity, of course. And then the index is zero. So close this now. And now we should have here that 5.2. Of course, we probably have to put this in a negative. So you can just multiply this by one. You can also expose this value as your global gravity intensity. And now we have here our hanging cable that should work based on your mouse actions. So if I now click my mouse, I should now have the ability to add gravity on the cable. And we can always later on adjust this over here. Like if you're not happy with the gravity, this is a very non-destructive way of adding this gravity. Like I can always here play around with these sliders. So we have this in this menu as well. And like I mentioned before, you're currently using the Y axis. You can just simply use the X axis as well. So if I would here go to my Python state, we can basically copy paste this here, like copy paste this, and we can just change this then to the X axis. So we can then have the X axis and use it for something else. Like if you want to add more cables based on the X axis of your mouse, or if you want to add different radiuses. So here's another example. So if I move my mouse basic on the X axis, we can see that we have a cable that's basically splitting up. So I can do this here as well. Maybe they, they go together here again, that we have the gravity from before. And we can then simply do this. They can come together here. So you can basically now go crazy and implement all the features you would like to see in your cable tool. Or you can use this here for like a racetrack or something. You can have many ways of using this tool. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And of course, special thanks to all of the patrons.